He was like, I've got a bloody good score today. Check this out. This thing's near mint. The general brand, Fujitsu. Japanese, all Japanese quality, this thing. Nice vintage TV. This thing is in bloody good condition. Been very well looked after. And this thing was sitting in storage in a well sealed box since 1995. So, it hasn't been powered up since 1995. My office is my careful checks and hopefully the uh, capacitors haven't dried out. Looking close at that CRT. Hey, that's a, no, yeah, I'm a touch of a black matrix. I never said a CRT like that. It's got circle, um, instead of the, the rectangular red, green, blue pixels, it's got circular pixels like an old black and white CRT. I've never seen that. Very solid sounding tube. Oh, but that's, oh, that's C, so I don't have to do some lubricating. Some checks of the um, Romeo SR meter before we go powering this thing up. It's a nice old toilet tuner. Had some use. But hopefully the, uh, the CRT is not too badly worn. Nice old clips or plug. Polystyrene's ejected with it over the years. Let's rip the back off. I wonder what sort of... Uh, I've looked at the, the grill, it's like the old American style. It's got the really old school setup inside. Really cool. Let's see how I like it. Not only did I get this, but I got these two. Centrex TV, 68 centimeter. That one's a little normal um, 21 inch, I think. Something I've never seen with TVs is this cheap and modern. Three core, that three core plug. Never seen it. That was typical of TVs of this era, but something this modern, CRT. Guess it was cheaper to use uh, the three core flex on it. Never seen that in um, CRT TVs this modern. There's Centrex, I think, um, I think Coles or Sam's Warehouse or one of those cheap, cheap Chinese two dollar stores sold that brand. Yeah, they were cheap, they were cheap generic Chinese brand Centrex. They're gone. There's a lot of worse brands out there that replace them now for flat panels, so for what they are, they still work okay for something say cheap and Chinese. Well, it's probably kept that when it's just a preservation set like um, Fairlane 500 Skyliner does. Just a sample of what, how, how crappy this technology has become. Just as a little, uh, just for the hell of it. They both work fine, as I said. May, may not, may air well that one, I'm not sure though. It's got a funny OSD on it though, it's got a digital bloody block. Block digit display OSD. Thought it was quite funny. All right, let's get this on here apart. Let's uh, flip it around and have a look at the inside. Color adjustment, brightness, contrast, automatic fine tuning, solid state. Yeah, good vintage. Just the way I like it. Warning: Ultra Triple X rated flyback porn ahead. Look at that bloody resistor. And the HT line, the triple up, look at that flyback. Man. That is a nice flyback. This is definitely a preservation set. I'm not destroying this TV. This is, this is how TVs should be made. It's a Toshiba black strap. Look at that, it's all American style. Just set up just like an American TV. This is quality right here. This is how this is. This is exactly what I look for in a vintage TV. This type of engineering, just awesome. Overbuilt, very solidly made. That's how TVs should be. A L plus B. Little taps here. Interesting. Arc or meter secondary, I know the chassis only. Focus there. That's a matches shooter, 132 mega ohm resistor, high voltage resistor, 38 a cap on the back of the tube. With an extra implosion band on the back. That's a fat neck. Look at that. Look at the gun setup on it. Um, oh, I can't remember. That's not inline gun. I've, um, it's an earlier type of CRT. I forgot what they called it though. But it's definitely a keeper. This one's got a nice knee on there. This thing's definitely for preservation. I probably won't use this much at all. I'd be too, too afraid to wear the tube out. Look at that. Only a telehype, proprietary limited. 
telephone 7821073, Via 132 Baronia Road, Baronia. Interesting. Look at the transformer in that. This is how TVs should be built. The cabinet itself is the only cheap thing about it. Real thin, crappy wood, but if it's looked after, it should last and hold together forever. There's little uh, tappings here. Must have t test patterns. The top, I think it's the top of cheap it is. I have to Google this, I've got to refresh my memory, but the, how those guns are set up, this is not your regular inline gun CRT. This is one of those rare type CRTs. Look at that, and here's the rest. It even has its own schematic diagram. Awesome. Man, I've got a really good score here. It's not that dusty either. I'm going to be careful there. Variac and ballast. Crank it up very slowly. Actually, put it in the near, near the ballast. I just crank it up slowly in the Variac. Just in case there's uh, Elna electrolytics have dried out and gone short. I haven't seen power since 1995 when this thing was put in storage. So, about 18, probably 19 years, this thing's been um, asleep, so to speak. The old general layout, general uh, logo there, it's all made by general. It's got the old bloody handy dandy toolless clamps. Your separate conversions and everything out of the, uh, yeah, it's the, um, this CRT being an American test is, uh, so if I get a CRT test from America, or something like that, this tree will definitely be a top that's listed in that manual. This set, that, that set up. Awesome. The only thing that would have did, got this transformer here for 240 by operation. And they are um, modified for the PAL system, obviously, so this probably would have been made for the American market under a different brand, maybe Sanya or Sears. So, but look at that, that's just well made stuff. This is how TVs should be. Alright, let's uh, put the variac on and slowly crank it up. Just wake it up carefully and gradually and see what this tube's like. Hopefully, it's not worn. Yeah, plug in. I'm going to wake this thing up slowly. 40 volts. Look how they've uh, just wrapped all the warnings in that transformer to make it nice and dust free and quiet. <sighs> I usually see the filaments in that tube. Head of a dining. Fuses there. Volume down, volume up. This is swarming up, it's uh, things are powering up like a cheap set. That's weird. It sounds like some electrolytics have gone dead. because I'm stressing it, underpowering it. Don't want to be too hard on this thing. I'm just waking it up slowly. HT is on. The flexure won't be full because of, um, I haven't got the voltage turned all the way up. No sound. Slowly, slowly. Gradually wake up. It's been a long, long sleep this thing. It's been a long B-E-A-E-T-Y sleep as anything would say. Scratched tube. Seen some action this thing. so far unplug safety first nothing been stressed I think I've uh, done some reforming the amp meter didn't even twi uh, twitch so 
I think this is safe to proceed at four mains. Look at that, dancing around the static. Yeah, they got the heaters on now. Now we're, well, we're going to get something. Speakers are the only thing that's the um, crappiest sounding, but eh, who cares? It's the engineering in general, this thing is what we want. Look at that. I think they call it a delta gun. I think that's what they mean, the delta gun. This thing's a rare beauty, this one. Look at that. American style, all right. This thing's unique in its own right. There can't be too many of this style vintage TV it uses this Delta gun setup left in Australia. All right, just wake up. Everything sounds okay. No smoke, no dry out capacitors as a result of that. Turn the settings up, brightness up. There you go. Cool how it turns off. I think I'm pretty sure that's a Delta gun. But I think Sears in America used that Toshiba um, tube. I think that was San Diego Toshiba Sears used, so this could be an Australian version of a Sears TV. Yeah, this thing's definitely unique in its own right, especially in Australia. This is pretty much an American set modified for the Australian market. Interesting. It's definitely a good score. Yeah, the circuit board's got some decent good soldering on it. Oh, I'll go hook up a set top box of this thing. I don't care how bloody obs little people think these are. This thing's an absolute beauty. This is definitely a preservation set, this one. Hey, no, it's got some dust in it. it smells household dust, so lounge room household dust. Yeah, judging by the engineering, the layout, the vintage of the and the overbuilt, just how it's over engineered. I'd say it's at least 72 or 73. He did, the owner did say this was the first, very, very first colour TV that came out in Australia. So this is probably would have come out the same time that Philips K9 came out to the Australian market, which was a very, very first um, model TVs, colour TV that was coming out in Australia. So 1975 when colour TV was first launched. So possibly made earlier. This thing was uh, modified for our market in 1975, so, so judging by how, how well it's built, I'd say it's at least 1972. It's got to be 1972 this was made. Haven't found a specific exact date code yet, but 69W something. Uh, 200 volt capacitor. CE69W on the older capacitor. The date, I think that's a date code. Could be 1969. Definitely looks like that. Just the, how, the, the, the um, vintage of it. It's a definitely a bloody gem. There. This is a very, 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 very first colour TV that ever would have been sold in Australia. Very first uh, early model. So this is, this is possibly the first colour TV um, that came, uh, came out in Australia. So this is how they were built when colour first came out. Ah, the aroma of this old thing. It smells like an old chalkboard. Chalk on a blackboard. Mmm, old school. Literally old school. That's just the way I like it. Now, I'll let it go for about 15 minutes. All checks, checks good. I think the capacitors are still okay. It did deflect. The vertical did shrink a little bit. Play up, but the way it was playing up is a uh, Symptom of a dirty pot, so hopefully it's a dirty potentiometer. And of course, if these are seized, in this case this one is, don't force them, and try and turn them and force them, it just breaks them. I'm going to have to carefully strip that can, that um, UHF uh, tuning capacitor down, and carefully lubricate it. Because this thing is pristine, I'm going to keep it in pristine condition. Now, this is the first so when the Philips K9 came out, in other words, this sort of came out too, at exactly the same time. So, this is as close to the first, first colour TV ever came out in Australia I could get. So, this is the first models that were coming out and colour TV officially launched here in 1975. And that thing was seized up. It was seized solid. I might have to pull it apart 
Because I don't want to say it's my other general TV one, so it just clicks and it skips. Oh, I've got it tuned in. The colour though. Bloody bleeding, unfortunately. But I think it's going to have to, I'm not going to use this very often, so. Bloody bleeding. That's a full brightness, everything turned up. AFT off, AFT on. There you go, a bit better tuning there. Damn, it's bloody warm. Unfortunately. Yeah, well, it was, a, it was a main TV in its day, so. But still, this is a quite a rare type of, um, this particular Delta Gun type of CRT TV is very rare in Australia. I had a picture of it. You know what a DTV is like. So 11 is UHF. VHF. I got some um, fixing up the door in that tuna there. There you buggers. I'll see if I can plow this antenna. Hang on. Let's, let's get this antenna going. There we go. Colors turned all the way down. That's off. Oh, it's still black and white. The coals are still red. Whew. Red stays, everything else bleeds, that's flat out. Bloody Nora. Yeah, gotta love DTV. There we are. A coal's ad, perfect for the um, colour test. Jeez. Interesting CRT that does that though. Look carefully at the pixels here. Yeah, they're, they're circular pixels. So the red pixels are the biggest, and the tiny green and the blue are the tiniest. The main pixels are the red. This is almost like a black or white CRT, but with colour guns in it. They're using the same phosphor, so to speak. Or no shadow or aperture go in there. That's the AFT off. Yeah, they're bleeding, unfortunately. AFT on. The bleeding is not nowhere near as bad. Need some degaussing. Contrast down. Yeah, colour, everything turned down. So yeah, because this has um, purity ring, uh, like purity adjustments too on the back of that um, yoke. So this is pretty much an American TV made for the, modified for the Australian market to use a PAL system though. Interesting, I'll try and get this some better tuning here. Okay, got the, finally got a signal. Some deal or no deal here. Got a bit of bleeding. It's not too bad here, but when the, they've got a prize car, and when it shows that prize car in the black background, you can see a face actually, there's a prize car, they did bleeding on it. I think it gets silly if I turn it right up. A little bit there, it's just on the colour there. If I press the info, I'll just bump the bloody RF modulator. The colour's a little dull. Yeah, there. Yeah, which is a bit um, bleedy, unfortunately, but. So it's had relatively high L's. If I turn the brightness down a little bit, the bleeding does die down, die down a little bit, but not much. Anyway, just got to fix that um, tuner up, which should be a bit of soldering and lubricating the gears, and that'll work perfectly. You just got to realign that uh, dial there. This is pretty much uh, restored. Anyway, thanks for watching.